Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the Glitched Out Gaming Podcast, your weekly podcast of gaming goodness. I thank you for joining the show. My name is Lord X, and today I am not joined by Israel Pacheco. Instead, I have a very special guest with me, one of the four men of GamingLife.com, Mike Chalice. Where am I? <laughs> I don't even understand what's happening right now. Somebody messaged me. I agreed to do something. How is it? How's it going? It's going good, man. How about yourself? Oh, you know, just sitting here looking at your impressive show notes that I can't edit because I'm on a Mac and different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no worries there. I do this podcast from time to time with uh, my buddy Big Boss, and I believe he uses a Mac most of the time there as well. <laughs> Perfect. So he knows your pain in that regards. Very good. But anyways, uh, we got quite the show here this week. Uh, some interesting news to go over. And a topic of the week that I think is near and dear to horror hearts, anyway. Mm-hmm. I agree. But let us kick this show off as we kick off every episode of Glitched Out with what we've been playing. And Mike, what have you been playing this week, man? Uh, honestly, it's been a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I'm sort of in between games right now. There's been a lot of people trying to get me to play Fire Emblem. Uh, I don't play strategy RPG, so I haven't touched that, but mm-hmm. Rainbow Six Siege, or as I like to call it, G.I. Joe's The Game, um, <laughs> is uh, a lot of fun with uh, the guys over at Gaming Lag and stuff, and i uh, been touching on that, but this weekend I dove back into the Division Beta, even though I said I wouldn't, mm-hmm. and played that a whole bunch, shot a bunch of NPCs in a cover-based format, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the Division looks really good, I'm really excited for that. Um, but other than that, I haven't touched a whole lot. Played a little bit more Castlevania Symphony of the Night on my Vita, but that's about it. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I've been meaning to play the Division Beta. I downloaded it, but never got around to it at all. Uh, it's got some major promise, dude. It's it's really, as long as what the beta is, is such a small section or such a small portion of the game, then it's going to be good. If it's like Destiny was, like... 50% of the game is the beta, mm-hmm. then it may run into some problems, but we'll see. Only time will tell. Mm-hmm. Cool beans. Uh, over on my side of the fence, I've been playing two handheld games, two RPGs. Uh, the first one being Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Um, I've gotten a bit further in that now. Really, really good, and the story is, eh, it's interesting so far, but the main draw of the game is capturing Digimon digi-evolving them, seeing what you get, because there's different paths you can take each Digimon on. Just like the older games, uh, 1, 2, and 3, kind of bringing back that kind of feel. And for me, God, that... I haven't touched those in <laughs> so long. <sighs> but the best part of the game for me is that it is a traditional turn-based JRPG. This is Final Fantasy meets Pokemon meets, well, Digimon. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You like JRPGs? A little bit. Oh. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> no, neither do the folks <laughs> who listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyways, really good. Uh, music's great. And I'm hoping to get through more of that in the very near future. Uh, the other game that I've been playing, though to a lesser extent, because I only picked it up Friday... I've only been able to touch on it a little bit, and that's Fire Emblem Fates. I, God, Friday, I spent so much money. I picked up the special edition of the game, which includes both Birthright, Conquest, and the DLC Revelations on one cartridge. And I actually picked up the Fire Emblem New 3DS limited edition as well, so. Because you're insane. Yep, yep, pretty much. And that 3DS had dragons onto it, so. That's ah, well, there you go. Sold. <laughs> but it's a really nice 3DS. It's, like, pearl white on top, black on the bottom. You turn it to see the dragons, like, glisten onto it. It's it's really nice. But uh, in terms of the game, solid. Uh, it's Fire Emblem. It's as good as it always was. Uh, I haven't made it out of the tutorial section yet. I think I'm on Chapter 4 of 6 of the tutorial, so... But it's good. I'm enjoying it. It looks like it's going to be a really great game. Yeah, I mean, if you were waiting to get the the new 3DS anyway, this is probably the one to get. It's the nicest one I've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was either this or wait and hope that they do a Dragon Quest one, which I highly doubt they're going to. It'd be weird if they did, since it's basically a remake. I don't necessarily know if that 
I mean, they're important games, don't get me wrong, but I don't necessarily know if that justifies making a new 3DS, especially since this year will be a really big year of Nintendo, whether they even drop the 3DS completely with their new uh, CEO and stuff, so who knows what happens. Yeah. Well, they, they did make a new 3DS for uh, Majora's Mask when that came out. True. I think it's going to be a little bit different of a port, though, because Majora's Mask was completely overhauled. <laughs> very, very true. Plus, it's Zelda, so they're like, yes, here's a new 3DS. We know you're going to buy it. Yeah, it has, their, has one of their poster childs of of uh, the, the 80s and 90s, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing, aside from recording stuff on WWE 2K16 for Friday Night Fight and Tuesday Throwdown. So, yeah, I lost my first match. I failed. <laughs> well, you have another shot on Tuesday when you team up with Matt. Oh, yes. Listen, the beard will get us through, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, uh, with that out of the way, let's dive into the news. And, uh, Mike, you've got our first story for this week. Yeah, so uh, Quantum Break, uh, a game from Remedy, uh, for exclusively to the Xbox and I believe PC at a later date, is going has gone gold coming out on April 4th. Uh, which is uh, quite exciting, actually, because I've it's one of the few Xbox games that I'm really looking forward to. Um, kind of interested to see what happens with the TV aspect of things, because everything that Microsoft has ever done with that, and I'm really referring to Halo Nightfall, has been trash. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but the game looks really, really good. It looks like Uncharted with time control, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I have to admit, it's probably the only game I think that. Uh, I want to play on the Xbox One at this point. I won't be picking up a system just for that one game, but yeah, yeah. it's tough to on a new IP though, right? Like you can't, you can't really justify a three hundred fifty dollar purchase, then an eighty dollar purchase mm-hmm. with unless they have a bundle. I'm sure they do, but uh, it's yeah, a white a white Xbox. I saw that actually, but you can't justify that purchase on a new IP when you don't know anything about it. But Iceman's the main character. <laughs> That's important. He can shoot ice. If only that were true. It, it, would make the, it would make the game better, I'm sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an Iceman origin story, actually. That's the secret on a break. They go back in time to find out how he got his powers. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but that's cool. That is really cool. Okay, our uh, next story here on the docket is Fallout 4 has finally revealed the first batch of add-ons that are coming. And they have announced four of them. Uh, the first one is the Automatron DLC, which will be $9.99, and it's coming next month. Uh, the mysterious mechanist has unleashed a horde of evil robots into the Commonwealth, including the devasta- devi- bleh, devious Robobrain. I can't talk. Uh, so yeah, you're basically hunting down and harvesting parts to build your own custom robot companion. So it's Pokemon, but with robots in the Fallout universe. Yeah, I don't necessarily know how I how I feel about add-ons uh, for Fallout. Fallout sort of underwhelmed me. It was the first Fallout game I ever jumped into, and uh, I liked it. Don't get me wrong, I played it for probably thirty-five hours, but it didn't blow my mind. Like I think everybody set ex- expectations up way too high for me, yeah. um, because everybody was just like, "Oh, Fallout Three was so amazing, and New Vegas was even better, and all this other stuff, and blah blah blah." And then I played Fallout Four. I said, "Yeah, it's good." Mm-hmm. I like the Elder Scrolls series more, but they, well, to your point on the 3DS, it has dragons, so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what's not to like, right? What's not to like, exactly, so. Um, but we'll see. I don't typically do add-ons. Um, in mm-hmm. fact, the most recent add-on I've done is uh, the following, and I was, I'm so far really disappointed with its performance issues and stuff on PS4, so mm-hmm. they always seem to bite me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, the other piece of DLC here is the uh, Wasteland Workshop, basically helping you build more stuff for your uh, settlements, uh, which is for 99 And the final one is the big piece of DLC called Fire Harbor, which is $24.99. Uh, let's see here. Fire Harbor features the largest landmass for an add-on that we've ever created filled with new faction quests, settlements, lethal creatures, and dungeons. Become more powerful with new higher level armor and weapons, the choice is yours. Uh, and more importantly, this is the only the beginning. They have more plans uh, with more than $60 worth of new fall adventures and features throughout 2016. Now, the biggest and inter- most interesting thing about this is that they're changing the price of the season pass, kind of like Dying Light did. 
Uh, on March 1st, the season pass will be going from $29.99 to $49.99, so a $20 price jump. So if you're interested in the DLC for Fallout, you might want to buy the season pass now before March 1st. Have, have they confirmed that is is that going to give all the current DLC that they've announced and the latter that they haven't announced yet? Or is this just for the stuff that they're talking about now? Because they're saying that Far Harbor is $25 and Automatron is not, is $10 and this other thing is $5 or, or however however you spin it. And they're charging $29.99 for all of it. Does the $49.99 include everything after that as well? Or is it just what they're currently talking about doing like a Destiny approach where this is Expansion 1 and then this is Expansion 2, but then De- uh, Taken King is not included in your season pass? Uh, from what I'm reading here, it will include everything. Uh, okay. Uh, any, anyone who buys the season pass for 30 bucks before March 1st will get all $60 worth of content. So. Okay. So they're doing the, so they're doing the good guy thing and saying it's 29.99, but we're doing a lot more than we thought, so we have to raise the price. But get it now if you want it. Yep. Gotcha. I mean, that's interesting. I, I probably won't play it. Or did you play a lot of Fallout? Yes, you did. I, I remember did. Yep. you constantly being on it uh what did you think of the game i enjoyed it quite a lot um one of my favorite games of 2015 never made my top five but it was still high up on the list uh yeah i really enjoyed it but i'm not sure if i'm going to be diving back into this uh i'm not a big fan of season passes to begin with so i might just wait until next year when they maybe chop the dlc in half for a sale or something it would be interesting if they did like a game of the year edition for 50 bucks or something because that's what a lot of people were talking about just waiting for it Mm -hmm. and then you pay 60 bucks for everything altogether instead of but who knows uh i'm with you though i typically don't do season passes so Mm -hmm. yeah uh moving on from that i guess yep uh next bit of news we have is the five things revealed about Hideo Kojima's new game. I believe this was at the Dice Awards. Um, he was doing a lot of interviews uh, there, but uh, Kotaku posted a uh, an article talking about uh, five things that we learned about it in his interview. So, number one being his game is big and has lots of freedom. So it'll be made in about twelve years' time. Yeah. So in twenty thirty one, we'll be looking at you know the next Metal Gear, not called Metal Gear. Mm -hmm. Um, Number two, Kojima says he keeps his word about game budgets. Hmm. So I don't, I don't even really know what to take from that because you don't really know what happened with Konami and stuff like that. But I'm assuming he said, this is how much it's going to be. And then everybody sort of assumes he needed more money. And then Konami said, no, but maybe that wasn't the case. Maybe he just, set expectations and they just didn't believe him and when he wanted more money he didn't get it (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah Uh, stop me if you want to add anything but number three is uh, his new game could expand into an anime that excites me (laughs) poor because I I think about Hideo Kojima's games and how much I love them Um, and thinking about it becoming an anime series, which I tend to also like since I just recently finished watching all of Cowboy Bebop, all of Helsing, Ultimate, going through uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and I've watched all those series like four times. So uh, could be really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe it'll be something like Zone of the Enders game that he'll be doing, and that can easily transfer over into an anime. Everybody loves giant robots. Yeah, well, exactly. If you have giant robots, it's got to be an anime. It can't be anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four, Sony isn't trying to control Kojima. You think? <laughs> they just let him go on like a fourteen-day tech tour to do. To basically told him, why don't you just go wherever you want, and anybody you want to go with you will go with you. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. Mm-hmm. Talking to Mar- Mark Cerny, and then he's over at Respawn, which I, f- I actually found that one was the most interesting picture that he posted on that big tour because talking to people at Respawn who just made an Xbox PC exclusive Titanfall 1 and obviously they're trying to buddy up now because <laughs> they're just like damn we screwed up why did we make that deal uh, yeah and uh, last but not least Kojima's kids totally hate his beard <laughs> I <laughs> love that this is included I know I hate his beard I want him to go back to youthful never aging Kojima 
his beard only makes me realize that at some some day in my life he will be not making video games. <laughs> well, we all know he has a beard because Kojima had, ah, sorry, Konami had him locked up in the basement for so long, so he oh, had yeah. no access to a razor blade. I swear, whenever he was making, like, public videos during all that craziness, he was just, like, there was a gun behind the camera from a bunch of security guards saying, like, no, you read from the script. You read from the script, and if you deviate... <laughs> yeah. Um, but, what, like, what do you think... What do you think Kojima's next game is going to be? Because he's also said that he wants to keep this small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wants to keep it small. There's also been reports that he's interested in doing horror and... Uh, unnerving VR experiences which scare the life out of me if he wants to make a horror VR game I'm in thousand (laughs) percent in I love horror games Um, but I I really like PT was one of the most fabulous experiences of 2014 I think Mm -hmm. and it was like just the just the the like the cleverness of how the puzzles worked and just I don't know did you play through that Lord uh, I played a bit of it before I got scared and turned it off. I still, I still have it on my PS4 because, you know. Hey, listen, you can get some good money off of eBay for that. <laughs> uh, but no, it was like some of the puzzles were incredibly clever, like just looking at a, a word uh, on one wall and then going to another wall and, and that one of the letters from one word would disappear and go to another part of the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like just things like that and, and how it was just completely creepy and so silent hill i just wish konami didn't have the rights to that because it would be awesome uh but more recently he was uh, reuniting with darrell Rivas, and uh, guillermo del toro also was on record saying that he would do whatever kojima wants mm-hmm. which i'm assuming includes fan him and feed him berries while he <laughs> makes his new game so yeah yeah it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what he does um I, I'm interested in anything, honestly. Yeah, anything his name is on, I'll play it. And that's why that weird argument came out like, well, should you even play Metal Gear Solid Five? Because, you know, Konami makes all the money and Kojima doesn't and stuff. Well, of course you do, because it's the last game of a legacy. So mm-hmm. you obviously support his artistry in that. And I was just doing, I'm going through my top 10 video games of all time, and I just finished Metal Gear Solid Five at number six. So, like, that's how much that, in game, that game impressed me. So his next game with complete creative freedom and Sony just signing whatever checks he needs them to, Mm -hmm. uh, I think is just going to be, just gives me some tinglies in the stomach. (laughs) I'm excited. Maybe he'll make a Vita game. That'll be interesting. (laughs) Somehow I doubt by the time this game comes out, Lord, that (laughs) that the Vita will still be a key component. Uh, Hey, there's... They're still making PSP games right now, so it would not surprise me. I will. T- I was actually. Th- I'll actually. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, so we'll. I, I'll save that. But uh, okay. yeah. All right. So uh, let's dive into our last news story here, and uh, well, I just had to include some Japan news this week, and over on Gamitsu, uh, they had a story: Dead or Alive Extreme Three Details Event Paradise Owner Shop and Casino. So, Koei Tecmo and Team Ninja have released a new set of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 details and screenshots introducing the game's Event Paradise mode, Owner Shop, and Casino. Uh, The Event Paradise is a viewing mode where you can choose your favorite events, look back on the events and happenings that make up the important memories of your vacation at any time via Event Paradise. This mode will... This mode is on lock as you play through the game. Very horrible translation there. Uh, From your arrival on the island until the end of the vacation, sometimes there will be unexpected events that you may want to look back on. So, there's that. Uh, Similar to Gewehr Paradise, you can set your favorite costumes, looseness, looselessness, degree of suntan, wetness, and hairdo. Take that for what you will, folks. I have literally no comment on this because this series lost my respect for me. Lost the respect for me when I was about four. (laughs) When I used to think things like that were cool and like, oh my god, look, you can set the bounciness. Give me a break. Like, it's, it, this is literally everything that's wrong with the stereotype of gamer because this game literally adheres to only that. 
all all gamers are fat, lonely nerds who live in their mom's basement who need attention, and this game is part of the attention they get. So, which is not true. I may be sitting at my wife's vanity right now recording this, but I have my own bedroom. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the owner shop. In the owner exclusive shop, you can purchase special items such as the series familiar legendary swimsuits, Fortune and Venus. There is also the secret ticket, which is only sold to VIPs who spend a lot of time playing at the casino. This absolutely secret ticket seems to be your entry to some sort of special dance viewing. Dot dot dot. Um, the casino. It has blackjack, poker, roulette. The familiar three games of the uh, series from before. And Dead or Alive Extreme 3 is due out for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita on March 24th in Japan. An English version is also due out in Asia. And I'll put in the normal plug right now, which I have inserted at the end of various podcasts before. Go to Play Asia. They have it on sale. You can buy it and import it. Yep. Like I have. You sad, sad little man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ha- just kidding. I am buying this to make videos. You ha- I'm not sure if you've ever seen the video I did called Extreme Beach Boobies. Uh, yes, I did actually watch that one. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, uh, that's my main purpose for buying it. That's all right. We all do weird things for YouTube channels. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that wraps it up for the news this week. Uh, so we can dive into our topic of the week. And this week's topic is that the PlayStation Vita is now four years old. That's right. It celebrated its fourth birthday this past week. One more year and it can go to kindergarten. So I went time... to kindergarten when I was four. Did I go when I was four? Well, I have my birthday's in November, so that's probably why. But, oh. yeah. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> it's too long ago. Way, it's way really fun ago. sending you off on side tangents, by the way, and making you think, because <laughs> it completely screws you up. Uh, so be, be wary of that, because I'm going to constantly try and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it wouldn't be any, anything different from what Izzy, Ray, or sorry, ECW James, or uh, Big Boss have done to me in the past. All good, man. All so, right. Vita's four. Yes, so yeah, it's time to celebrate, uh, talk about the Vita, and some of our favorite games on the Vita. So, personally, uh, Vita is awesome. It's a great system, in my opinion. It is. I 1,000% agree. I went to go play it last night, and sadly it was dead, which I don't know if I ever remember seeing before. <laughs> I didn't know that it actually died. If you, Because most of the time, if, if people don't know, the Vita battery lasts in sleep mode for, like, four months, mm-hmm. and it still has a charge. Um, I went to go play Castlevania, and I ended up having to charge it first, but... Uh, I love my Vita. It's awesome. I had one originally at launch, sold it like an idiot, and bought another one um, more recently because I finally dove into Persona 4 Golden, yeah. which is the best game on Vita, hands down, in my opinion. Yep. 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 Uh, well, I will. I, when you're dang and romper. <laughs> yep. uh, Persona 4 Golden is the best game on Vita, in my opinion, and the best value by far mm. of any game almost on the market. Yep. And I'm pretty sure it's still on sale right now. For, ten I think, bucks. Yeah, ten bucks. Yeah, I saw that. It's a normally $30 game for ten bucks, and that ten dollars, people, will get you a 60-hour JRPG of the ages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, absolutely fantastic game. Great story, great characters, great gameplay. Everything but that game is great. So yeah, I totally agree with you. Persona 4, by far one of the best games on Vita. And as you briefly mentioned, Danganronpa, uh, my favorite series on the Vita by far. 1, 2, and even the uh, Danganronpa, another episode, which was a different style type of Danganronpa game. All three fantastic games, I believe that everybody should play on the Vita. They are so damn good. Who does not love a situation where kids are trapped in a school and have to kill each other in order to escape? To escape an evil teddy bear at that. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Um, What I was going to say earlier, and I wanted to save it for this section, was uh, the fact that I think one of the reasons that the Vita is dying, and you had mentioned that PSP is still getting games and stuff made for them because there's such an install base, but 
why hasn't anybody cracked the Vita yet? Obviously, Sony engineers did a, an amazing job mm-hmm. of making sure it's not easily done. But if they did that, it would single-handedly like save the Vita. Because if I, I, and this is an example, I was literally looking for a way to play Earthbound, which I don't think you can download on the 3DS right now. You can get it on Wii U. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it would be awesome if my Vita could get uh, jailbroken or something like that so I could play games like that or if Nintendo offered like a subscription service of some sort. But um, but I'd love to be able to to have more Vita games and stuff. And if somebody cracked it, even if you didn't jailbreak it yourself, thousands of other people would and they would all like flock to stores to try and buy them mm-hmm. and be playing Mario or whatever it is they do. And then because of the install base, there'd be so many people buying or developing games again. Uh, although there is still a bright future. Um, there's still quite a few indie games uh, like Severed, uh, yep. which looks really good that's coming. Um, so who knows? Yep. We'll see. Yeah, it's the uh, indie devs and the Japan devs that are really keeping the Vita alive. I mean, you look at developers like NIS or um, Xseed, Atlas, like, they are pumping out Vita games all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's insane uh, the amount of games that what is considered a, and I quote with fingers right now, a dying system is when every single Tuesday five or six new video games end up on that machine. Uh, not to mention it's a great place to play PS1 classics, PSP yeah. classics. Uh, you can literally download every Final Fantasy from 1 through 10 onto the yeah. system. Including the best one, which is 9. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Uh, Just did that the other day. I'm going to start it up again. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, yeah, there there is an endless reserve of games on the Vita. And, uh, like, even newer games right now, Shovel Knight, excellent oh, on the Vita. so good. That was great. I mean, uh, I haven't played it yet, but Saturday Morning RPG is out onto it now. Uh, yeah, I've been seeing that. I haven't tried it yet myself, uh, but it looks interesting. Shovel Knight's so good, though. Mm-hmm. Got my amiibo sitting beside me when I game. Very we nice. talk sometimes. It's not a big deal, but <laughs> we're on first name basis. I just call him SK. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there there is quite a few games on there. Um, it's such a value, though, too. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off again. Like it's it's a two hundred dollar machine, but if if you I had a machine on launch, it was two forty nine ninety nine. But I when I went to go buy it and again, I couldn't really justify the price. But you can get Vitas right now in pawn shops in off eBay for like sixty or seventy dollars. And if you have a PS four, it's such a huge investment because not only mm-hmm. can you play all these Vita games, but you can remote play. And I'm not saying it's the best environment to be playing some games, but if you're just screwing around in like an RPG or as an example, like uh If you're playing The Witcher, which I did this with my Vita, uh, The Witcher's not really, like, timed buttons or anything like that type of game. It's just sort of explore. You can easily remote play that on on a Vita and just lay in bed while you're falling asleep and get a little bit more game time in. Mm -hmm. Uh, In my situation, I try and find game... And I get a lot of it, don't get me wrong, but I try and find game time wherever I can, and that's... it's, It's amazing. I was on my honeymoon in Disney remote playing Destiny at one point. Not very well, because it was a hotel Wi-Fi, but it worked for a bit. It was interesting. I just thought that was really cool. Nice, so, and, and going on the topic of Wi-Fi and good Wi-Fi, if you have a good uh, Wi-Fi connection, there's also PlayStation Now on the Vita, where you can play, God, hundreds of like PS3 games on yeah. your Vita right now. So. Yeah, people, I think, undervalue what PlayStation Now does for people. Um, With so many people, I've been a PlayStation kid since PS1, uh, predominantly PS2, of course, because I had PS1 and and, and N64, but having, being in the PlayStation ecosystem for a long time, yes, I've played a lot of PS3 games, but with PS4 outselling Xbox One right now by about double, there's so many people that have never been in a PlayStation environment that maybe have missed all the Uncharted's, The Last of Us, and those, some of those games are not being remade for PS4, or some of those games may not, like, may not ever get remade for PS4. And PlayStation Now is twenty bucks a month, and you don't have to constantly subscribe to it. You can subscribe to it for a month and play all those games if you want to. Yeah. Or if there's just one there you want to play for a month, you can rent it. Yes, people people talk a lot of shit about 
um, about PlayStation now, but I think the people that talk crap about it are the people who really don't see the value in it because they've played all those games. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of people who haven't. Um, Hell, I, 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 I look at it all the time like, oh, I never played that. I could, I kind of want to download and play that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I and people people crap on PlayStation now and the Vita all the time, like blah 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 this. But people who have one understand it, and that's why everybody at a PlayStation conference when they're talking about Vita like holds up their damn Vitas. Mm -hmm. So because they're all very proud to have one because they're awesome systems. And as much as I love the 3DS and its games, and and it does have a lot of good games, PlayStation Vita I think has an answer for every one of those games, and it's a much more powerful system. Yeah. Yeah. By far, definitely. But I digress. Mm-hmm. So yeah, great system, tons of great games. Uh, hopefully, we'll be getting more and more for years to come. Um, and you can also pre-order Dead or Alive Extreme, Extreme Three for the Vita as well. <laughs> Hooray! Had to get that in there. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, that that pretty much does it for our topic of the week. Um, uh, yeah, go buy a Vita, folks. Support yes. the system. Absolutely. Used or not, support the games and the developers that are trying to keep it alive. Mm-hmm. Mm. And if you haven't played Persona 4, it's one of the best games of all time, so play that. <laughs> yes, go buy Persona 4 and Danganronpa. Hint of what my top five games on my blog is going to be. <laughs> 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 that may be there. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. All right, so uh, with that, we can get into the questions and comments. Uh, oh, I got a notification on Twitter. Maybe we actually do have a question. Uh, no, we don't. Okay, so, uh, comments from the last episode. Aaron B. left us a few. Uh, one, you voted for Bayonetta Lord X. You're the reason Batman didn't win. Uh, <laughs> referring to the Smash vote. <laughs> <laughs> Batman would be weird. Bayonetta's weird, too, though, so I don't, uh, I don't get it. Uh, either way, Clap's I, I, best edition. I have been playing as her, and I really like her in the yeah. game. Apparently everybody think everybody's been saying I don't have Smash right now. Um, I got rid of it a long time ago, but um, apparently they're saying it's very true to the way that she actually fights and stuff. So that's really good mm-hmm. that they're taking that sort of care with it. Yeah, same with Cloud actually. He's really good as well. Yeah. Speaking uh, of Smash, my Nessa amiibo came in this week, which I was very excited about. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Very very nice. Um, Aaron left two more comments here. Uh, I had very mixed feelings about Firewatch. But I agree with everything you said about it. Uh, the writing is top-notch, which, yes, yes mm-hmm. it is. Kind of a weak ending, but eh. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's actually the only thing I said about the game, man. It was, I was like, man, this conversation is great. I love the decisions. I love that I can be, like, I have the freedom to be, like, a typical dick. Uh, or I can be really nice or really understanding. Um, the, first, the first little bit of the game is, like, basically the video game's version of Up!, and <laughs> yep. it really hits you in the feels, um, but the ending was a little bit, a little bit disappointed, I guess, a little bit disappointing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and his last comment was directed towards Izzy, who spoke about playing the Deadpool game. Uh, I'll be very interested to hear what you think of Deadpool, the game, after you finish it. The first two hours are hilarious and a lot of fun, but the game went on, and it became clear that they lost a lot of steam. And as I commented to Aaron here, it's going to be a long time before he gets that opinion from Izzy because shortly after recording that podcast, Izzy refunded the game on Steam. So he's not going to finish it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my Matt, who does uh, our, our gaming like podcast with us, he loved the game, but even he said it went on for too long. And there's a lot of games that, uh, that are culprits of that. Um, I did go see the Deadpool movie, though, finally on Friday. So, so good, wasn't it? It was pretty good. Uh, I like Ant Man more, but I mm-hmm. Deadpool was good, really good. Yep. All right, so that does it for questions and comments here. So we can get into wrapping up the show, which was a nice swift show this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so before we do go, Mike, why don't you do some plugs for your stuff, man? Let the folks know where they can find you. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Chalicist, um, C-H-A-L-L-E-S-I-S-T. And uh, I run a website with uh, three of my friends called GamingLag.com. There's two Gs in lag, and we do a podcast every single Monday live on YouTube.com slash GamingLag at 6 p.m. Eastern. 
I normally do a lot more plugs, but I'm not going to do that because we'll be here for another 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm pretty shameless with them. Uh, but no, yeah, it'd be awesome if you guys came and hung out. Uh, you can talk to Lord in the chat as well because he's there most weeks. And uh, we have a good time talking about uh, what actual gamers and not gaming media thinks of games and what we think about certain news and stuff because uh, I find that video game media is a little bit diluted with uh, oh this game is great um, but I didn't have to pay for it so I guess that's what I think and somebody who spends $80 on it might have a completely different opinion mm -hmm. and if you're a polygon they'll be too focused on the sexual nature of the game to really care about how good it really is yeah, well, my biggest, uh, well, that was what uh, sort of inspired me to do my top 10 list, and I've said this on Twitter but and on our podcast as well, but my goodness, every time you read a top 25 list on IGN or anything like that, and I'm not calling them out, I understand that they're a big organization compared to me, mm -hmm. but they do, It liter the list is literally word for word what a group of 40 people came up with. Yep. Because every game that has importance but isn't really good is is very rated high. And anyway, I so I started my own top ten list, which is what I think are the best games, with only one rule that I can only choose one game out of a series. If because otherwise the first six games would be or the first five games would be like Metal Gear Solid one through five, <laughs> and it would be a pretty boring list. So uh, that, yeah, that is, that is a very tough thing to do. I do common uh, commend you on doing that. Yeah, was, it was yeah. tough. The Metal Gear one for me to get to be between five and two was it took me a long time, but ultimately uh, two I think is a better story. But five's gameplay uh, is second to nothing. So mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, yes, GamingLike.com, go there. <laughs> All right, folks. So with that, uh, that wraps up the podcast this week. I thank you so much for tuning in. I've been Lord X. He has been Mike Chalice. And we are glitching out. <laughs>